Hi guys, and welcome to Reality with T. Before we get started, thank you for having me back. I know it's been a while, but I wanted to, I needed to take a little break. Uh, it was hard for me to get back to filming. But before we get started, please like, subscribe. At the end of the video, please comment. I appreciate you guys watching. So right now I wanna talk about Couples Retreat, episodes four and five. So let me start with Mike and Rada. I, you guys know I think, I, I never thought Michael Blackson was funny, but for some reason now, I guess seeing him like in real life makes him funny because I, I don't get, I don't laugh at silly comedy, like slapstick comedy, but I do laugh at situational comedy. So he just has really good timing. And when he like starts getting on people, I think it's hilarious. And I think that um, I like people who don't take themselves too seriously. He's a little, to me, he's a little sensitive. Or maybe he has a little something with Kirk. I could be just making it up, but I feel like every time Kirk jerks jokes on him, he's kind of like, don't start with me. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't say anything back. He doesn't laugh, really. So I'm like, does he not like Kirk? I don't know. Like, he's like, at one point, Kirk says something about, are you getting a tan? He's like, don't be a smart ass. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Either way, um... I believe the episode with him starts with all the guys. They come together and he talks about, you know what? I'm starting on the second episode. Let me go back one because I didn't talk about this one. So let me start with um, Yandy and Mendici. They show them, they don't have much to talk about this episode, but they do show them in the water. And they're in like three feet of water and she's trying to get him to swim. And he's acting like he's scared of his own damn shadow. He's like, no, 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 you move back. And I'm just like, I was just so turned off by it. Like, that's that I never left the city stuff. Like, granted, they always say black people don't swim and they do swim, but a large amount of us, a, lar a large amount of us don't, me included. Um, but I do get in the water, I play, I float, I can swim on my back, you know what I mean? It's just really going into like treading water, like that deeper water that I get a little bit nervous. But I mean, come on, like stop acting like you had never been nowhere. Like he probably hasn't been anywhere, but still like, oh, that was just a turn off that she has to be like, come on, like he's a baby. And I feel like that's a lot of what she does, just taking care of him in life. I could be wrong though. So then, uh, you know, Michael, they, they say, where's, where's Rada? He comes out. He's, I laid her out last night. Da, da, da. But he says, you know, I'm lying. She basically drew the line the night before about him having the side chicks. And basically he says he doesn't want to budge, but he doesn't want to lose her. And he's like, she signed a contract. <laughs> and then he talks about how later he's going to do a comedy show. And he said he's going to light everybody up. Right. So, um, that's going to be fun. Because when he said that, I'm like, I know he's good at roasting people. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to see this. So then we see a medium come in, right? Which I'm like, I know in all these shows, they have to talk to the Tyro car reader or the medium. They have to talk to the, this therapist or that therapist. They bring all these people in. The medium, I was like, eh, okay, whatever. She just, they're eating brunch. And she just kind of sits at the table and she's like, okay, I'm going to do like a reading on everybody on the table. And I thought it was weird because it's like, nobody said, you know, I want to be read or what do you think? Or what do you see around me? Like she just kind of started offering information. And I thought that was kind of off putting because it's like, number one, they were eating. It was supposed to start off on a positive note, but everybody done ran from the table crying because of all this stuff that you done drudged up that nobody asked to have drudged up. You know what I mean? And she said it publicly, which was like, why, what if they didn't want that shared publicly? So for example, um, she brings up how Kurt and Rashida lost a baby and you know, Rashida gets emotional about it. Uh, Princess gets emotional about it. And, you know, I guess at some point, Kurt, Rashida lost a baby. She's saying your baby is being taken care of by Kurt's mother. Kurt, in that moment, um, he did get up to follow her. But then he, you know, annoys me. He was kind of like, don't cry. And I hate when people tell people that in general, don't cry. If that's their emotion, they should be allowed to let it out. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be ashamed to cry. That's the release. But it also plays into on TV, this whole thing. Number one, I don't think that he knew. A lot of people say don't cry because they don't know how to handle the emotion. I've said it in the past. Now that I know a little bit better, I try to be mindful of it. But, um, 
you know, and we say it to kids and people all the time, don't cry. And he probably isn't knowledgeable of it. And he's just in the moment I feel uncomfortable and I'm on camera and I don't know what to say. And this is what I'm saying. But we just have to remember to allow people to have their emotion. And a lot of time that release comes through crying. Then Princess got emotional and Ray J's a little confused. Like, well, why are you emotional? And she's just like, it made me think of the fact that I, it seemed like he didn't know that she already had a miscarriage with a previous relationship. And the lady tells her that Princess is the soul of the baby that she lost then, then is back in their second child now. I mean, this all plays in if you believe that, I don't know. Um, maybe she does know that. Ray J didn't like that. He got upset. Um, he felt like, <laughs> basically, they, she didn't eat, mess up breakfast, but he felt like, um, how do we know this? I don't believe it. This is BS. The whole thing. I think he was, number one, upset that it made Princess upset. Number two, that he didn't know about it. And number three, you're saying that another man's baby that my wife has been with, the soul is in my now baby. So in a way, and in his immature thinking, it's kind of like, I had another, you know what I'm saying? Like she has a baby, my baby is belongs to another man type of thing. I, Cause he has such an ego issue, you know? So he didn't like it at all. And he was kind of bucking the lady and you know, whatever. So then she takes Mike and Ryder over to have a side conversation. And they're like, oh, we thought we we're gonna get in trouble because we were like laughing about her. But really she comes to them with the real and she's like, I feel a baby between you guys. And they hadn't told anybody that, um, that they were pregnant. So they finds out that they, that she finds out or they, they let everybody know that they are pregnant. And so she said, that's why she, even though she left the relationship, that's why she came back and wanted to work on it because now they're having a baby. I'm just thinking, girl, you don't got yourself in some mess now because this man is not trying to give up the life that you allowed him to have. And you're going to have a baby with somebody who requires threesomes and foursomes every few days. Like, that's insane. I also want to know what happened to him because that sounds excessive. Um, I understand you like a occasional threesome and foursome, whatever some people are into. But to say that you're having it every weekend and just a threesome isn't enough, you have to have foursomes and fivesomes, that seems excessive. So I would just, I would love to know more about him and, and what happened and why why he needs that much you know AJ sat down with Raymond who was with Delicious and talks about what's going on with them sexually because he just doesn't have the um he's not able to keep up with her right now and she's unsatisfied and so you know basically AJ talks about how she's sexual and voluptuous and very open with her sexuality and he just kind of talks about some other stuff like she changes, she wants things to be exactly her way. And then as soon as I get it exactly that way, I guess this is the, the, the comparison he was making, such as the furniture, she'll order all this furniture and set up the house. And a few days later, that furniture's out and there's a new set of furniture in because she's changing her mind. Maybe he's saying it's the same thing with them and their sex life. That she, I think I have it one day and then three days later she changes it and I don't really know what's going on. And he's used to structure and order and preparation and she's the opposite, more spontaneous and more impulsive. So he says that he's in the process of learning, but in the beginning, when she was telling him what she wanted, it felt like chastising. So that could be another issue. Like you're talking to me like I'm a child and um, I don't, that turns me off as well. So he says, you know, I want to make it clear that I was, that everybody brings up jail and this and that. This happened over 20 years ago that he was in jail and did his, his time, but he's been experienced since then. He's been married. He has a kid, you know, um, he, had, he has experienced the life. It's just that this is new with her. So, you know, AJ tells him maybe be a little bit more spontaneous because he says he's better with schedules. He, she says try to loosen up, be a little bit more spontaneous for her, you know, build up and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he says that he gets frustrated because he doesn't know what to do to make her happy. Um, you know, and he says the frustration is going to build up and build up and it's going to end up being toxic. And... But I still didn't really get understand what was causing the lack of romance or the lack of motivation. I don't know if he's just burnt out or she's just too much to handle or it's too much at one time. Or is he just set in his ways? That I didn't get to the bottom of. So then we uh, they go to the comedy show and 
you know, Kurt brings Ray Day to the side. Obviously, somebody like feeds him these lines and he brings up the conversation in Princess's purse thing again. And he says, you know, did you ever find out about it? And Ray J says, no, I didn't. And Ray J's like, oh, he's like, okay, but don't ask now. And Ray J's like, I'm going to ask now, though. But I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask now. You know, and he's like, don't, 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 don't do it. But of course, Ray J's going to ask. And Ray J's already drunk. And he gets up there. That he gets him to thinking. He starts making a toast talking about this dude's out here trying to take our wives from us. And don't let them take our wives. And blah, blah. And Princess is looking confused. And everybody's like, okay, grab the mic from Ray J. What is he talking about? And then the funny thing was when he was talking to Kurt, he was like, she want to have more kids, though. But we not having sex. And, you know, Kurt's like, how that going to happen? He, and Ray J's like, she wants my eggs. And Kurt is like, does he know that he don't have no eggs? <laughs> Yo, I swear Ray J is a character. He knows good and well he don't got no damn eggs. But I think that he, he's an actor. You guys you guys forget that. He has a lot of personality. And I think he is hilarious in the faces he makes. Like, I just can't take him seriously. I think he is funny. Um... But, you know, uh, Mike does the comedy show and he roasted everybody. It was funny. Everybody had a good time. He said, AJ looks like a handsome lady. I was like, because somebody said she looked like Ding Rames. I was like, oh my God, just because she's brolic up in the shoulder neck area. So I don't know. Um, I thought Rada, I'm like, is she drinking wine? I know they're trying to keep it a secret. I'm not judging, but it was just something that I noticed. Either way, let me go to the second episode. So starting out with Mike and Rada, this is where I was going to start before. Um, I think it started when they he was talking at the table with Mendeecees and Kirk outside. They did a hike and then they came to the table and started to talk. And he was joking. Uh, he said when he came from Africa in his teenage years, he was joked on. They talked about him so bad. I believe he was in Philly. Nobody liked him. He got no girls until he was about age 18 and then nothing. And then when he was the next Friday, that's when he started getting women. So now, like Mendeecees is like, you know, you're pretty much in your second childhood. And so you know he says he wants a marriage and a family but he doesn't know if he can change his ways um but he can only see doing that with Rada so he thinks he's ready you know um we find out this episode that Rada has kids from a previous marriage and she wants a stable relationship for her kids so Mike has not met them and I thought I'm like wow okay um I see this two ways she's smart I see that she has tried to keep her kids away from this whole thing that she's doing, but there's something about her that she still wants to be in the spotlight. She still wants the celebrity, Michael. I granted, I do think that they have um, very like, you know, kindred spirits. Like they're very fun loving and the whole thing. But she says she will not introduce them until they're more committed. And Michael um, seems okay with that. Um, she has a 16 year old girl, which kind of made me feel like, when is she home with them? Parents. I feel like if you're going to party and stuff and be out in the streets, maybe do that when the kids are younger, even though it's harder because they're harder to take care of. But don't start doing this because you're gallivanting around the world and you have a 16-year-old girl. I don't know who, how many other kids she has or how old they are, but they're a little bit older. That's when you need to be at home with your kids. You know why? Because all the time that you're spending at home and they're feeling alone, number one, they get bored. They start inviting people over and then they get pregnant or they get to get to doing things they shouldn't be doing also that's when kids can notice that you're not home often so they have this feeling of abandonment or they're aware that guess what mommy is not here but she's out there doing the do and on reality shows and talking about threesomes and foursomes with Michael Blackson. This is something that her friends are going to have to see when she gets to school you know unless she is like I don't know, hangs with him on the weekends and they're at their dad's or, and then when she's home, like the whole makeup and glam is there. Like, I'm just trying to see. It seems like she has good intentions for her kids and she, she's trying to do well by them. Um, you know, that's a big step for her to say, you know, a celebrity, this guy, you, you can't be around my kids. And so I know this is more stable because I don't want to bring anybody around them. That's great. But then I kind of see, I'm just like, I would love to see her at home. I mean, granted, I don't want her to bring the cameras to her home because, you know, I don't want her kids exposed to this whole reality lifestyle. But it's interesting because I'm like, when does she get to be around him? And how does that look? And how will her kids, like, you know, I, I swear parent, a lot of parents check out because they say the kid is more independent. They're 16 and 15. They're hanging out with their friends. They could be at home. They could put dinner in. They could put on a movie and go to sleep. They could lock the door. This is when you need to be home. This is when your kids know. They, they This is when they need you. Even if they say that they don't or they don't want you to, this is when they need you to check in, not check out. 
I've seen too many parents, mothers. Of course, we had the kids at 20. By the time we're 30 and 40, we'll be partying, right? We want to party every weekend. But this is when you need to be home, sitting on that couch with them kids, seeing what time they came in the house, that they came in uh, alone, that they're not up in their room on the internet, meeting people they're not supposed to meet, that they're not hooking up with people, that they're not sending out new pictures. This is when you need to check in. I already know. You know what I mean? I, I'm not planning to go anywhere with my kids, especially my two girls around that age. If I'm a party, if, if I was like that, I don't really want to, but I would be doing it now when it's like, oh, they can go over to grandma's house and they can have a good time. They won't even know that you're gone. You're 16 and 15 year old, trust me, they know and they can feel it. Okay? Just a food for thought. So, you know, he does see a future with them. He can only see it with Rada. He really, he really does love her. Um, and he can see himself cutting off side chicks at some point, but it seems like he's not ready to do that now. They also had a part where they were, I guess the women were supposed to pamper the men. He start, They all start licking toes and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm like, okay, they gave him manicures and the whole thing or whatever. Um, Mendeecees comes out to the spa day with jeans on. I'm like, it's just feels so overkill New York Harlemish. Like, I'm gonna wear Tim's on the beach. Like, dude, you too old for that. Like, you know, if you're gonna get a massage, you don't wear no jeans to the damn massage. Even Yandy's like, that's what you wore. Like, it's almost like he's the character. It's like, he ain't never been nowhere. He don't know no better. You know what I mean? Like, I just hate that he's playing into that. Maybe that's the case, but like, just don't don't play into it. You know what I mean? They give him these lines. I swear he can't read them well. Um, I, <laughs> I just see he's just not... I, he just doesn't do it for me because I swear because when he asked Kurt like um so what made you like get into like comedy it's like I don't know he just can't deliver him well like come on um I mean when he asked Michael that then um oh when they were having that conversation Mike was saying that he's ready to cut off was it Mike who was he talking to was he talking to Ray J <sighs> who did he talk to I can't remember but he talked about I think he was talking to Mike. He talked about how he used to be called the pull-out assassin before he got a side chick pregnant. Because Mike was saying, I think Mike was saying that he wouldn't get anybody pregnant. And I'm like, Kurt, you're bragging about being called the pull-out assassin, meaning that you were having sex raw with people who were not your wife. We know you were because you had a side chick pregnant, but how many times were you cheating on your wife and why are you bragging about it? Kurt's a little, he don't really get it either. I don't know. It don't really come together for me for him either. But that's another story. So, Ray J and Princess. Um, she said she used to do his nails all the time, which was nice. Um, she gives him a manicure. And they were talking about the past and the present. And, you know, she says that she feels like after they had the kids, his behavior got worse. And then this is when he starts getting upset because he's like, she keeps needling me. We're having a good time. And then she always brings in something negative. She always uh, takes it to a place we don't need to go when we're actually having a good time. And so I do agree, maybe she has bad timing. She always does have something to say because she's upset and hurt, she has resentment, and she wants to get it out. And I guess it's like, okay, I have him sitting here, I don't want him to think this is all fluff and games because it always wasn't. But her timing is a little bit off because you can't actually just go with the positive vibe sometimes. So she asked him then, have you been entertaining women? And he said he has entertained them and he met them at the strip club. And he asked her if she's been, because remember now he does he can't take the heat. He reminds me of Chris from Married at First Sight. He doesn't like the heat on him. He doesn't like to be confronted. So he's also gonna manipulate the situation and throw it back on her and make her seem like the victim. So he asked her, well, I think I had a question for you. I think you've been texting people. And you know, he asked about the laundry in her purse and she just smiles with satisfaction. Like she's just happy. She's so happy that he cared enough to even, what he did one time I think was he set up her purse in the underwear and pulled it out. And he was gonna come back a day or two later to see if it was moved or if she used it or whatever and she was just so happy that he cared enough to do that and she, because she thought that he didn't care and um I was just like that sucks that you're happy that he you guys don't trust each other he had to do this whole setup thing because he doesn't trust you and of course you're not doing anything but the fact that like you have to be reduced to being happy that he cared enough to set up your purse to catch you in a lie is just kind of off and toxic to me Either way, he ends up looking her damn toes. Delicious and Raymond. Um, Delicious asked him if he regretted getting married so quickly. And he said, no, absolutely not. He had fell in love with her. Um, you know, 
he says that she needs to be patient with him, that he definitely dropped the ball with the passion in their relationship. She talks about how she has a 10 year old at home and her dad has been locked up since the baby was two years old. And um, since then she had to be the alpha woman, woman in her household because she's taking care of everything. She says she's being mommy and daddy, even though you're not being daddy, that's another conversation. Um, she doesn't want to be the alpha anymore. Um, when she's doing it by herself, she's doing all the planning, the bill paying, everything, you know. Um, she wants him to be that person. So then we find out that he lost his mom at a young age. And I guess, I don't, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to remember how, what that, how, what they um, correlated that with. But either way, um, Delicious is getting, she gets annoyed, she gets a little upset because he constantly wants her to tell him what to do, how to please her. And she doesn't want to keep having to tell him and to give directives and this and that. She wants it to come from him naturally. Like, you should know some of these things. You should want to try some of these things. I shouldn't have to tell you, go to page 284, go down two lines, read these three words. Like, you, she doesn't want it to be, she wants it to be more spontaneous. She doesn't want it to be so set up and structured and because then if she's telling you exactly how to do everything, she's expecting it. She wants it to be unexpected. She wants it to be a surprise. She wants it to be something new, you know? So then they all meet with a tantric healer and sexologist who used to be a monk. And before that, she was a stripper in Detroit. So I don't know how you can be more eclectic than that, right? So, you know, Ray J Princess says that Ray J had, uses the same position every time and he doesn't look her in her eyes. And he says that he looks away from her eyes when he, you know, the woman was trying to tell them, how, give her eye contact, give her eye contact. And he's just all over the place. Eyes can't focus anywhere. And that's probably because he's a liar. You know what I mean? He's guilty and he don't want her to look into his soul. So he says that he always looks away because, I mean, he, he, when he tries to look into her eyes, she looks away and that causes a disconnect. Again, manipulation. He's just trying to throw it back on her. Just stand up and be on your, you know, stand up to what you are doing in this situation, your behavior. Okay. Because he says, yeah, she's right. The position we do it in, I don't even have to look at her because you feel bad because you're doing her dirty. So he said, um, he'll do better by her if she decides to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> so Delicious explains how she's a freak and he's conservative. And then they start, they had me dying. Like he started talking about, I guess, how she should talk to him in the bed. All kind of everybody's looking at them. It was hilarious. And then, um, you know, the lady starts talking about, you need to breathe through your genitals, all this kind of stuff. And everybody thought that was funny because it was like, how the heck do I do that? But either way, they had fun. Um, a lot of people, I saw a lot of people on social media talking about how Yandy and Mendeecees really don't have a lot of chemistry. I don't think Kurt and Rashida have much chemistry. I don't think Yandy and Mendeecees have much chemistry. Um, the others, yeah, you can see how they can have good chemistry. But I don't know, maybe we'll find out more about that. Um, but let me know what you think. Please write, give me some uh, feedback in the comments and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.